Okay, welcome back. Uh, last night we finished cutting out this uh, bending form for the sides. Um, it worked out to be just about enough wood. I had cut these a little narrow, but so you see this little step here. This is, I'm going to call that my excuse to uh, set something in the vise and have a, have a little lip so it'll, you know, vise like this. Because I only need to bend to about here and this one's going to stick out like this. So. Anyways, so that's the plan now is this will be the bending form. The one thing I'm a little concerned about is being able to bend this cold. I had thought about doing it cold. I don't think I can do it cold. So I got this little notch here to cut the, to pull the thing in on the, on the ears. But this is a pretty heavy radius. And I think cold is going to be Splitsville. So instead, what I've decided I'll do uh, is I will take some of this, which is just a, like a 3 16 inch wall aluminum pipe that's just slightly bigger than this radius here and slightly smaller than this radius down here. And I'm going to turn that into a hot pipe bending form. Um, I'm going to chop off about 7 or 8 inches of it from here and mount it to a piece of channel, um, which is already in a vise over there, um, and put a, put a propane torch into it and heat up the inside from the inside and then you can bend over the top of it so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna make today so we've got this little c channel it's about i think about four four and a half inches long we're just going to mount it to this with a hole through the center of it through here and we'll just put it in the vise and then i'm going to have a rig of some kind to hold the propane torch into the pipe so the pipe will stick out here so first thing i'm going to do is cut a chunk of this down I think about, I don't know, I would imagine six or so, well, what's an acoustic side run? Six and a half-ish, so let's go with about seven to uh, make sure we have just enough. I think six and a half is plenty actually, but we're going to go a little over seven and uh, go from there. Well, shit. I forgot to hit record again and I apologize. Real quick, this is that little chunk of four and a half inch channel. I wanted a hole that was off center. I didn't want it in the middle. I wanted it as close to the edge as I could get it. And it needs to be a fairly big hole because it's got a handle, you know, whatever this diameter is, which we'll buy it. about to find out. It's got a handle exactly two um, yeah, about two, two inches, and I only have drill bits that go up to one inch, which you see here now. So the next bit I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to bore this to a really good fit, I think. I'm hoping I can get it really good, but, so, the basic gist that we've got so far that you've missed is I mounted it in my four-jaw chuck, so it's eccentric. It's, it's as eccentric as I dare go with the the four jaw, it's a four inch four jaw chuck and this is four and a half. So it's, you know, we're at the extreme end on this side, but it's so far holding up, it drilled okay. I wish you to see, would have been able to see that, but I, uh, I don't know what to say, I forgot. It happens, especially the older I get. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up to bore. That's about as fast as we dare spin this little guy. And that's about as big a chunk as we dare take. So this is going to take some time. So I'll spare you the boring details here. The boring details. Did you get the... It's a... It's called a joke.
we've got our slightly not quite centered hole. Um, it's a fairly tight fit. It's not press, it's a slip, but it's a tight slip. So hopefully I can get some method to lock it down onto there about like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bore this and leave about an eighth of an inch as a cap. I'm gonna bore it for this to go on and then I'll use a set screw on the end as a cap. I think that's gonna work. We'll find out. I'm gonna continue with my four jaw because it's mounted and to kind of dig the, the new chuck. But we're gonna get this a lot closer to uh, center here. Okay, so I'm just gonna, this was an actual it's funny shape because it was a cutout from when I built my uh, my CNC router, it uh, it uh, it was a one of those situations where you want to cut a big hole, but you don't have a big hole saw. And you didn't have an easy way of doing it. So we, I, what I did was I marked where it was to get drilled, and uh, and then I drilled tiny little holes around the perimeter to give it. A uh, basically to perforate the perimeter of the hole. All right, so we're just going to shoot for semi concentric because this thing is going to get a lot smaller than this size, and this is a piece of scrap after all. So I care very little about it being centered, and we're just playing with this. This is my first time playing around. Not my first time, but it's among my first times playing around with a four jaw chuck. So it's kind of fun, kind of neat. We're gonna get a little. Okay, so we're fashioned somewhat centered, somewhat flat, doesn't really matter. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole in the middle that is not all the way through. And we'll do that very carefully here. And then I'll uh, step up a little bit so that I have, basically what I'm doing is making enough room for the boring bar to get down in there. Um, we'll just go straight to 3 8 because this doesn't have to be a very centered hole. It can wander and that's okay. Now I want to be very careful I don't drill through. That bit's looking a little dull. A little quicker. And let's take it a little deeper. Gotta be careful that it does not poke through the other side, or what kind of cap would it be if it did? Right. I'm gonna probably. Now nah, we can go a little deeper than that. That's probably far enough. Yeah, we're still not through, so that's a good sign. Okay. All right, so this is a little strange, but I'm a weird guy. Um, we're cutting with the lathe in reverse gear. We're running, spinning the opposite way, and I'm feeding in this way to cut that direction. And we'll just take our shavings this way using a regular cutting tool instead of a boring bar. And we don't have to be super precise with this because it's a cap that's going to get held on with a, uh, a little faster. It's going to be held on with a set screw anyway. Really what we're doing is giving ourselves enough of a shelf so that I can grip it with inside jaws with my three jaw chuck. Definitely big enough for this. It fits in there just fine. Now we can take it out of this chuck. <clears throat> All right, so we've got the smaller three-inch scroll chuck now again, the three-jaw, and we've got a, a 
cutter that I think is not going to be pleased about what I'm about to do to it. I'm going to have to get really, well, I'm more than close to the jaws. I'm going to end up probably touching them. So what I'm going to do is cut all this away and make a bunch of noise. So now we've got basically, I mean, it, it was a piece of scrap junk, so it's not a, it's not a showpiece. It's just a cap that's going to go on here. I'll drill and tap for probably just two uh, set screws to hold it on. And that's all there is to that bit. So this will be fairly close to the edge. All right. Get it. Here, so I can pound on this. So there's a screw. Pushing this, this screw over here is pushing down on that. I may need to throw a washer on there. Looks like I will. All right, welcome back. Uh, it's the next day, and I didn't really record this, so I'll, I'll share with you what I did. This is the mount for my propane uh, torch. Let me see if you can see what I'm seeing here. Yes, okay. So just a real quick, it's my magnetic base for a dial indicator holder. It's kind of the crappiest one you can buy. It's a Harbor Freight. Um, this might be the best use for it. Um, so it's just on there, you know, like you would do a normal deal. Uh, and then I took this little bit of angle aluminum and it was already drilled. So it was really easy to be lazy. I just already had it drilled and I took another little plate of aluminum underneath that and drilled that, put a couple of nuts on it and that'll hold. It's pretty solid won't even twist it's uh it's holding pretty well that then because it's a magnetic base lets me put the bottle away over here i can set the torch You'll, i'll bring you guys over here and you can you can have a peek at just how it looks but okay so what we we'll basically have i'll just turn it this way is the torch blows straight into the center the cap keeps it and it kind of blows it back that way. That lets me stand in front of it here and do the bending um, without worrying too much about getting torched. I do have to be careful because this thing is going to get hot. But that's basically it in a nutshell. It's pretty self-contained, pretty safe, I think. We're, uh, we're going to actually try to get a test bend going tonight and see how well this thing will do. See how hot I need to get it. Okay, we'll apply... A little heat. I don't know how hot I'm going to need it, but. Keep it pretty low at first, because I have no idea. So, pop it in there. And I'm going to put it in a ways. See if that's not better or worse. And we'll let it, uh, let it warm up a bit. And the idea is we're going to do some test bending with just some scraps of this 16th inch stuff. It's not this, so this piece is way thinner. This piece is closer to the real stuff. So I'm going to start with this thinner thing and see how it does. We're not even close to warm yet. 
accelerate things just a little. I like that I'm not getting any heat out of the end. That's good, so I don't burn myself. I always like to not be burnt. Since it's getting blown right back on it, I want to make sure we're sensitive to that. Okay, we're already starting to get a little bit of um, dancing here. So, pretty sure we're nowhere near hot enough yet. Drip a little more. Yeah, it's sizzles. It's sizzling and we're steamy, so we're going to try starting on this now. I'll turn it down a little more. We don't need to get melt melting temperatures here. I'm just going to dab a little bit of this water on a spot. Spray this down just a little bit. And then the way I felt it when I was bending the first time, you just put light pressure and as the piece heats up it relaxes and you can feel it relax. This is going to work out really well I think. I can feel the the maple as it heats up gradually give. I don't have to press real hard. And I'm just kind of carry that bend around a little bit. And we've already got a nice little 60 degree bend there. Give it a little more water. Yeah, we're plenty hot now. We'll send it here. I'll just put a little bit of pressure and it's really interesting how the bending seems to work is as it heats up you'll get this relaxing feeling like it's pressing back at me right now but there it just pushed away it just relaxed so it doesn't take a ton of pressure downward we'll just keep it just a little pressure and now we've got ourselves a pretty good bend and no scorching at all on the uh, on the inside which is great I am already pleased with what I'm seeing here and this is the thin stuff so I expected pretty decent success here I think we can actually go a bit cooler too Let's get some of this to wrap around here but you know that's that's the horn that I'm after I might have to go a little bit tighter than that but yeah, I'm pretty pleased. We can shut that off and play a little bit more until I run out of heat. Here, I'll go this side now. And just bend some more. There it goes. You can f totally, it's such a weird, I'm still marveling at it. It's even more pronounced when the board is wider because it takes a little bit longer and it pushes back a lot harder. But when it lets go, it's this sort of, yeah, once we got that thin, while well, we're really thin, it'll bend real easily now. Come out here. Yeah, it bends super easy. Make ourselves a napkin holder. We're too bent to get off the ring. There it goes. You can totally feel it. It's such a neat feeling. It, it's encouraging because you know when you're close. You know when you're on the right track, kind of. Oh yeah, this is perfect. This is cool. I think this will work out well. I may need to go a little tighter than these, uh, these bends are letting me, but ooh, that's hot right there. Just touched that. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay, we're going to go do a little burn relief here. Well, you know, that's what happens. You get a little tiny burn. It's a minor thing. You can barely see it. It's right in that little tiny little red spot right there. I think I'm going to survive. I'm pretty sure. But in the end, these have cooled off completely. You've got some uh, pretty cool curly cues. Pretty neat, I think. And this was the first one, just to kind of demonstrate that bit. I just have this rod that's about six and a half feet long. Um, I've got another one that I think is maybe 12 feet long, maybe a bit more actually. It's long. 
came with my house. They're about, they're a little under a 3 8 inch diameter. Um, and there's plenty of it. I'll use it to cut off. I think I'll cut off about, I think we'll do three and a half inch lengths. So I think an inch on either side is too much, but half an inch is too little. So the bending form is, th is two inches thick. So what we'll just do is I'm going to work out a way to set up a stop. Hey, you can't see me. I'm down here now. Uh, we'll find a way to set up a stop on the bandsaw so I can keep banging out the same size over and over again. Um, so stay tuned for that. Now, instead of a stop, I just made a mark on this with a Sharpie. I determined in my pondering, which is what I often do, that these don't have to be that precisely linked, the same length. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut one, hold it up, and use it as the gauge to cut the second one. So away we go. I think this size is good. It's about three quarters of it sticking out here. You can't really see them both, but yeah, that should be enough to grab hold of a rubber band with. So just keep on making more this length. got quite a few we're gonna find out if it's enough we'll bring them on over here and just chamfer the ends just a tiny bit all right so we've uh, cleaned them up a little bit chamfered the ends and this is basically the gist of what it's gonna do um, what I'll have are these, uh, these pretty good sized rubber bands that I'll, uh, I'll hook on here, bring around, wrap it over, and, you know, kind of make a crosshatch sort of system to, uh, bring it against and to help hold the slats down. So I think that'll help me with the bending pretty well. So there's that. We're getting very close to being able to actually start building this thing. Finally, eh? <laughs> 